Welcome to Affinity Photo. We're going to take a look at exposure merging. So we've got a raw file here, and as we can see, the highlights are severely burnt out. The camera could simply not capture the entire dynamic range of this scene in one exposure. So we'll go ahead and just take the highlights down and click Develop. Then we'll go into File, Open again. And this time we'll open up another raw file. Now, this is the same scene shot at the same time. The camera was set to an auto bracket burst mode to capture multiple exposures. So as we can see in this image, a higher shutter speed was used, which means we've managed to capture the highlight detail. So we're gonna go ahead and blend these two images together. And uh, once again, I'll just go down and reduce the highlights, click develop. Okay, so now what I want to do is select this entire image, copy it, move back to my original image, paste it over the top. So we're now working with two different exposures. We'll want to make sure they're lined up, and there's an easy way to do this. On the top layer, set the blend mode to difference. Then you can zoom in, choose the move tool here, and make the edges line up. Now you might be dealing with blurrier images at lower shutter speeds, so you're not always going to get a perfect result here. But this isn't like automatically merging exposures like we might do with HDR. We're more specific about the areas we're blending in, so you might be able to get away with a little shutter blur. So if I come back out and set the blend mode back to normal, what I'll then do with the top underexposed layer is go into blend ranges here, and I'm just going to take the shadows down a tiny bit, and that will begin to reveal the layer underneath, which of course is the layer that contains much of this foreground detail. So what we then want to do with this top layer selected is add a layer mask here. We'll go in and select it, select the paintbrush tool, bring the brush size up, and reduce the hardness here. Then if we hover over the image, we get a real-time preview of how we'd be blending these exposures. But actually, we're going to take a more layered approach. So we'll reduce the opacity to about 40%. And then we want to paint over this central subject, like so. Then we'll take the opacity down even further to about 20% and paint around the rest of the areas that are in shadow. Then we'll also go over the vehicle again. And then we'll build up another layer like so. So as you can see, what we're doing is basically building up the blending of these two layers slowly, step by step. And this allows us to come up with a much more realistic, much more subtle looking final result. So I'll carry on. So at this point then, we might actually want to go ahead and add say a curves adjustment to modify the image tonally, and also add a color balance adjustment. Something I like to do is tone the shadows magenta and blue, like so. And if I go ahead and turn off this top underexposed layer that we've blended in, you can see by blending these two exposures, we've managed to retain all this highlight detail. Now, just a quick tip, with images like this where you might have hard contrast edges, you can sometimes get some quite bad fringing like we see here. So we can tackle this on both layers simultaneously, and if we turn the underexposed layer off, you'll see it's much more prominent on the original layer. 
even though we've hidden this underexposed layer, if we shift, click, and select both of these, then go to Filters, Colors, Defringe, and we'll select a purple color, bring the tolerance radius up, and reduce the edge brightness threshold, like so. Click Apply. We will still have applied it to this layer, even though it's hidden. So we'll go ahead and turn it back on. And now we've reduced the purple fringing on both the layers. So to finish this image off, we'll go ahead and crop it. And so there's our finished image. So hopefully that's given you some ideas about how to blend different exposures of the same scene. By using masking and low opacity values, you can really build up that blend between your different layers. Now, I've just used two layers here, but you can experiment using three, four, five, six, seven, however many different exposures you want. But one advantage of using fewer exposures is that you have fewer layers to align. You might not always have a tripod to hand, as this image attests it was shot handheld. So if you have any questions or queries, please don't hesitate to ask on the official Affinity Forums. Thank you for watching.